What's up guys, Big M here. I'm a former British paratrooper and in today's video we're going to have a sneak peek into what it's like in the US Army boot camp or the OSUT. I'm excited to see what it's all about. If you are too, please like, share and subscribe. It massively helps out this channel. I also stream live on Twitch. You can find the link in the description below. Let's get into it. The immediate shock of capture of rocking up to week one, day one at training. These guys and girls, they do not know what they're in for, okay? They might have an idea what they think from movies and stuff, but they truly are going to be in for a surprise. This is Army Boot Camp. Before they join the United States Army, all recruits have to graduate from a 22-week program known as One Station Unit Training. Also known as OSIT. OSIT. Okay, so 22 weeks long. It's not too far off what it's like for parachute regiment training being 28 weeks. So it's a long enough period, and okay, near enough six months. That's a, it's a decent amount of time for training. It happens here at Fort Benning, a 182,000 acre military installation that straddles the Alabama-Georgia border about 100 miles southwest of Atlanta. Every year, more than 18,000 soldiers graduate before joining the more than 470,000 people actively serving in the Army. 470,000 active service members. As you can see, like the American military is so big in comparison to uh, the UK's such a large force and every year the intake <clears throat> was it 18,000 it just said that is massive that is a lot of people going through uh, going through the, the factory per se I think this guy here I think he's in for a shock me 13, 14, 15. Although most of the recruits that we saw during our time there were male, recruits trained together in gender-integrated <clears throat> platoons. These young men and women that volunteer to serve, they show up to us as civilians, and then we take them to, through a transformative process to turn them into soldiers. Let's go, sister. Like I said in my first video, um, the process is about essentially crushing that civilian a personality that you have uh, crushing you into nothing so that you can rebuild you into what they need you to be um, essentially fight the enemy so yeah the process is long it's hard it's mentally and physically demanding attention and you stay in position of attention on a rain soaked week in february we spent four days inside the army's maneuver center of excellence which trains soldiers to serve in the infantry and armor branches we saw different companies at various stages of as you can see here like this is a lot more advanced like kit wise and weapon equipment wise this is a bit more advanced than british uh well it definitely was when i joined uh, the parachute regiment training you can see he's got laser sights you know he's got a bit more equipment on on the actual rifle itself and yeah so it's quite it's quite good to see the money that goes into their training, it's its its obvious they have a lot more funding. Training. On day one, new infantry recruits on a bus from the Atlanta airport arrive at the 30th AG Battalion headquarters, where all new recruits are received. Listen up! You ain't got one to hear from you at this point! It's yes, drill sergeant, no drill sergeant! Do you understand? Yes, drill sergeant! The minimum age to enlist in the army is 17. 17. And you can't drink in the States till you're 21, right? So unlike in the, in the UK, you can join at 15, nine months. If you want to do a junior entry, you go to places like Harrogate or Basingbourne or, or you know, and uh, yeah, you can see from this drill sergeant, it's very much like the films, straight away shouting in your face. Everything's regimental straight off the bat. It's all about that shock of capture it really does have an effect if you imagine um being a civilian and getting shouted at it's hard to get track of the thought it's all about being in that what we call shock of capture 
and the maximum age is 35. The base salary for an entry-level private is about $20,000 a year. Let's go! 30 seconds! Hurry up, find your back! Once they're off the bus, the first order of business is establishing the code of conduct. Because I promise you, if you don't pay attention to what I'm about to tell you, you're going to make your army career very short. You treat everybody with dignity and respect, regardless of race, religion, color, national origin, gender, sexual orientation, and all other protected categories. Yes? Yes, Drill Sergeant! Sexual assault is any unwanted physical contact in a sexual nature. So if you put your hands on another individual and you're not instructed to or you're not saving their life, and they file a sexual assault, and it comes down that you put your hands on this individual when you weren't supposed to, that is going to be on you. You will get kicked out of the military, and then you'll probably have to file as a registered sex offender. Do you understand? Yes, Drill Sergeant! Before they go inside, the new recruits learn some basic commands and standing positions. Everyone look down at their toes. You should... This is the basics. This is the sort of thing um, that happens also with us at British Army, uh, especially in infantry training. Uh, you, you get taught the basics, how to form up, how to form three ranks, so that when you're marching around camp, even though you're going to look like a bag of shit straight away, it's... It's uh, it's sort of taught before you even get there, you know. So they they're sort of doing that. They're going through the motions, learning the basic bracing, um, and forming up in three ranks. I imagine. Feel the fit a slice of pizza in between your toes. If you look around, they're gonna see you. Cause you're taller than everyone else. Quickly! Who wants to move your? He is taller than anyone I know. Grab one and go. It's all the same. The recruits grab the snack that's waiting for them inside, consisting of a fruit cup, sunflower seeds, a granola bar, and a juice box. Watch the video for me, sir. You get these as well in our sort of training. We call them hats, which is, uh, it just basically means that um, you get, it's like high performance training supplements, pretty much. Um, yeah, it's, you need it in training, you need as much calories as possible, so they pack you with these little boxes and little treats as well, so. That's what these guys are getting. Since 1775, the Army has been the bearer of our nation's strength in every crisis or conflict. Make no mistake about it, the journey you are embarking upon will not be easy. But you wouldn't be here if we didn't think you couldn't meet the challenge. Listen up, your last four years. So Look at the way everyone's dressed. This is a bit different. When you rock up to parachute regiment training, you're, you're instructed to rock up in a suit. I know these guys have like flown probably a good few hundred miles or whatever, you know, from different states. Um, so they're trying to get in more comforts. So I guess they're a bit more lax about that. But I imagine that they'll be in their, their green kit very fast and that'll be very, uh, very ironed, like very well ironed, very smart looking. After being welcomed, recruits begin what's known as processing, which can take one to two weeks before oh, wow. their actual training begins. In a little bit, we're we'll give you a period to go in a room by yourself. First, they're given one last chance to discreetly dispose of prohibited contraband, like drugs, alcohol, tobacco, and inappropriate photographs. If any that's interesting. Tobacco, so you cannot smoke. Hmm, that's interesting. Any photo you possess on your phone is less than a bathing suit. You will not have it. You will delete them all. Recruits get rid of contraband in an amnesty room, where they dispose of it by throwing it down a metal chute. Is anybody confused on what you can and cannot have? The next morning, the recruits report to the barber shop. It's more than what we had. We literally got given a box of clippers and we had to shave each other's heads. Where one barber has worked at Fort Benning for almost 60 years. I've been here ever since 1963. That's a long time. I should have been retired a long time ago, but I wake up in the morning now. We want to come out here and go to work. Most easy barber job ever. Recruits are issued shave heads. They receive a series of immunizations and vaccines. That's a very interesting way of doing that. You would have thought, right, you go to like your doctor, the doctor on camp. I, I imagine that was a doctor. I, I assume that was a doctor doing that. 
but just going through like a like a convey line, like a, like a cattle line of such, just getting in inoculations. That's a bit. That's a bit mad. And get their official photo taken, <laughs> along with myriad housekeeping details that fill up their one to two week stay in processing. Hey, sit up straight. That is until processing ends, and the time for training finally arrives. Let's go. Grab your bags and go. We found a company of recruits about to begin training in the armor school. Those are bridal. These recruits are about to be picked up and taken to their barracks, where they'll reside for the rest of their training. Ah, okay, so they all rock up here first, get processed, and they get sent to the relevant buildings, relevant camps, to start their training. Okay. Let's go, you guys are going to the front, bus. go! This is the last chance for recruits to change their minds before training begins, like one recruit who decided to stay behind. Not for him. Okay. This short bus ride from processing to their new barracks will be the most peaceful moments these recruits will experience for a while. What happens next is known as the shark attack. Run, run. Hey, go, go. Nice. You want? You want... Chaos, shock of capture. Just when they thought they had a bit of peace, they are off the bus in the thick of it. Let's go. Run. Everyone, you freaking go! Get your bags up right now! Get your bags up this way! Let's go! Do something! Do something! Do something! That's what I thought. Why are you still not understanding? He just said it! Well, it's really just a little shock to the system so we can break them down to build them back up. Took the words out of my mouth. We're breaking a lot of habits uh, from the civilian world and nothing better than a little shock to the system to establish that that drill sergeant is in charge to let us start our training. Pick up your bag and hold it. The recruits spend much of the shark attack holding their heavy rucksacks above their heads. You want it above your head. If you get caught resting that on your head, I imagine you're in for a world of hurt, okay? Pain, breaking down that civilian, rebuilding you into what they need you to be. It's all part of the process. This is how it's done. Which takes a physical toll. Why is that so difficult? You can't pick that bag up. You decided to join the- Yeah, it's physical. You've got heavy bags, but this is a test of mental resilience straight off the bat. You can't pick that bag up. Right side bag, right side bag, right side bag. After about 20 minutes, the intensity begins to subside. And the drill sergeant's tone changes. We only produce the best soldiers in the United States Army. For training officially begins. <laughs> After the shock and awe of the shark attack, things do appear to calm down. It's a video. Oh, is, it, is it a video? It's a movie. Oh, movie, yeah. yeah. Oh, we found this group of infantry soldiers in week 11 of their training, practicing on the firing range. The mood was much more relaxed. Try to get eat up on my <laughs> And their conversations with their drill sergeants are conducted at normal volumes, like when this drill sergeant educated the recruits on the meaning of the military expression, ate up. It's a piece of Adolf gum good. You don't want something that's Adolf, right? If you want something fresh, you break the seal, it smells like olive oil, right? Okay. That dynamic changes because we want the soldiers to become more critical thinkers. At that point, we are turning into more coaches and mentors. We dial it back a little bit, so we don't want them frightened. We want them to be comfortable and in a state of mind that is receptive to learning and performing at that level. That's interesting. Um, that is also, that's true as well, what happens in like parachute regiment depot. Um, the screws or the corporals, we call them screws. Uh, they also like, they're, they're, like your, they're like your father role, okay? They're the ones who get you through training, okay? They, they're your idols. They're the ones that teach you everything you need to know to become a fully trained paratrooper or infantry or US Army. They're the ones that get you to that level. So they will get on a level with you. 
They've been there themselves, okay? They want you and they need to be respected and liked as well as, you know, teach the importance of survival, soldiering, shooting, nav, all these important things. So it's important about getting that balance, getting the respect of the guys, because ultimately these guys want the best out of these recruits to join their units. So it is, it is a good, a good uh, approach, I believe. But it's getting that balance right and then knowing where the boundaries are, etc. Up to 241 hours of infantry OSIT are devoted to marksmanship. Makes sense. Fire fire about 2,500 rounds using the M4 carbine, as well as the M249 squad automatic weapon, or SAW. We create lethality. We create expert marksmen at their individual weapons, because as an infantry soldier, that's what we're asking them to do. Ooh, gas Recruits chamber. Get one of the most painful parts of training out of the way it's early. Gas Once chamber. Check your seal. You will not touch your promat. This group of infantry recruits was exposed to CS gas, yes. tear gas, in week one of their training. You're going to continue to fall in until we tell you to stop. CS gas. CS gas is horrible. Okay, chat. If you've done any CS gas training, let me know in the comments how you, how you, uh, how you got on with it. What were your experiences? I personally reacted quite bad to CS gas. I know I'd phlegm from my nose down to the ground. I was coughing, my eyes were stinging. It's not nice. Um, so it is fun. You get to laugh at other people and stuff, but when you're getting like CS gas, this it isn't nice. It's not nice. These recruits are about to go into the gas chamber and get a taste of the CS gas themselves. Awesome. Back against the wall. The recruits spend about five minutes inside the gas hut. <laughs> God, that's it. Look at the gas. Look at the red eyes. Look at this phlegm here. This was this was me when I did this. It is horrendous. Red face, itchy eyes. This guy here is obviously suffering as well. He wants to try and rub it off. What they're doing here is they're trying to shake off any excess CS gas from their clothing. Trying to get off their face. It's 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 not nice experience, but it is funny. Tut. The recruits are told to flap their arms like birds to remove excess gas from their uniforms. There we go. <gasps> According to a drill sergeant, the effects of the gas begin to wear off after about four minutes. Some training moves <clears throat> indoors, like combatives, where recruits learn hand-to-hand self-defense tactics. We're trying to teach them to uh, achieve a dominant body position. So get out of one negative position and then switch roles so they end up having the upper hand in a fight. This makes sense. When you're getting into it, for example, if you're getting into a hand-to-hand -hand combat situation, you're going to be rolling around on the floor. Okay, it's not, it's not going to be any karate. It's not going to be like you see in Taken or John Wick stuff. It's going to be, you're going to be up close. You're going to be rolling around the floor. You're going to be biting faces. You're going to be having your eyes gouged. It's going to be horrible and messy. So this kind of training actually makes sense. Trying to get yourself as best trained as possible to get out of these uh, situations and, and, you know, and, and survive and win. So it's good that they're starting this early. During combatives training, recruits warm up with a particularly painful looking exercise referred to as the EO. While laying on their backs, they have to engage their core to wiggle across the entire room. Ooh. They use their momentum, shoulder blades, their, their core, to help them create space. The core is the fundamental strength point of your body. You can have strong arms, strong legs. If you've got a weak core, you ain't going to do much or you're probably going to get injured. Core strengthening is so key. i got a lot of time for this. Warm up the body. Recruits work up a major appetite during training. But Fort Benning is big and they're not always within range of the dining facility. Get those MREs. When training in the field, recruits are issued MREs, which stands for Meal Ready to Eat. Each comes with an entree, like this vegetarian pasta with taco sauce, along with an assortment of items, like mixed fruit, an energy bar, and this instant French vanilla cappuccino. Oh, lovely. Which just add water, shake it up, and enjoy. 
Once they're fortified, recruits return to their training. Recruits spend up to 60 hours in training known as MOUT, which stands for Military Operations in Urban Terrain. Nice. Infantrymen are. We call it like uh, Fibua, Obua, so like fighting in built up areas. Um, yeah, this is what this is, MOUT. Important, you know, most fighting war zones and such nowadays will be, there'll be buildings, streets, uh, tower blocks. So it's very important to be able to get trained in these kind of situations. Are expected to fight in different types of terrain and survive and win the fight. Right now, they are getting their first taste of uh, what that's like in an urban environment. Rolling tea, all right, coming up. In uh, operations across Afghanistan, Iraq, we are conducting clearance operations and uh, it's applicable wherever. Is that guy chewing chewing gum? <laughs> Good luck with that. If you were in parachute regiment training and you were caught chewing gum like this, you just, yeah, it wouldn't be worth it. Here we go. Boom. It's important for the future soldiers' muscle memory because they are working as a team with minimal communication and they have to understand how that coordination works together. Do it again. There's a saying, it's like practice makes perfect. Um, I don't believe in that statement. Practice makes permanent. It makes permanent, okay? So repetition through drill, will make it muscle memory, will embed that into the brain. Um, nothing will ever go perfect. But the more you do something, the more you go through an action, the more you repeat a drill, the more natural it becomes. You don't have to think about it. It just becomes nature. So when these, these, uh, these drill sergeants are making them do things again and again and again and again, it's all about getting muscle, muscle memory, like, you know, the motor skills naturally moving um, to the correct drill. It's all about repetition. After 22 weeks of training, these infantrymen are ready to leave Fort Benning. Friends and family gather to watch their soldiers graduate on NOA Field. Cool, so they call it graduation. We call it passing out. So we have a passing out parade where your families get to come and watch you pass out into your battalion. So these will graduate into their battalions. We call it pass out, same thing. Very proud moment in your life, very proud. I remember passing out, marching past my family. It's a very, very, very proud moment. They look like soldiers, they act like soldiers. They're carrying their head high. I have trainees that were not alive when 9-11 I think that's pretty powerful that I still can find American citizens that want to volunteer to serve their country when we continue to ask them to go to combat. These new infantrymen don't have long to greet their loved ones. Get on the bus! Or say goodbye to their friends before leaving Fort Benning to begin their service in the United States Army. There we have it, guys. Uh, a quick insight to U.S. Army boot camp. What's your thoughts? If you've done the U.S. Army boot camp training, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your story. Uh, if there's anything I missed or anything you want to add, also feel free to chuck it in the comments below. Guys, Thank you for watching the video, okay? Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video about massively helps out the channel. I appreciate you. And let's see you in the next one.